but I do see both movement. I see a movement for complete openness and self-regulation on the net and understanding that the value is everywhere. And I see another side that says, and last year in this conference, an Australian professor, I can't remember her name, but she was very good, and she said, look, you as journalists also have the responsibility to give contest to younger generation. Because if I'm a young, uh, guys who were not there when the Berlin Wall fell down. The only thing I know, I know it by the book of history, what my parents tell me and what I read around. So if there is no one giving me a perspective, I don't have context. So my understanding of that phenomenon is very different from your understanding because you were there, you had a different approach. So that for me is important too in the role of journalism, providing this context, because we always think about this new tool for new generation and they don't see complexity. For them, complexity is not a problem. There is an IBM CEO study on this. They have, it's, it's very recent, you can find it on IBM.com, survey CEOs, the CEOs, sees complexity and are frightened by it. And then they've done the same survey with uh, people below 20. They don't see complex. I mean, complexity is fine. So you see, you have these two different mentalities. And so if we don't want an intergenerational war or lack of understanding, maybe we have to find a networked approach so that we get to a higher level of understanding. But this is not my session, but I'd like to take the floor. Can I pass you the ball? Is anyone who wants to make a comment, ask a question, boo us? Yes. Um, hi, my name is Victoria Quaid. I'm Australian, but I come from New Zealand. I trained as a professional film video editor, um, then studied journalism, then got into community broadcasting. I've barely been paid since. I'm currently <laughs> studying... Um, I'm currently studying uh, training and, and the educating of broadcasters. What interests me, and I work in the community broadcasting sector, what interests me is that community broadcasters have, n have barely been mentioned to date, um, yet they are the prototype citizen journalists. Um, there's large community broadcasting right, sectors fine. in Australia and, and in other parts of the world, and in some parts of the world, development media and community broadcasting are very, very close. Now, the people I work with, um, are often older, um, they're not vocational journalists, they're never going to be paid for their work. Um, are they journalists because they've never trained? Are, are they not journalists because they've never trained? Even though they're reporting in their communities, even though they're um, speaking to communities that nobody else is speaking to, except when the politicians want to line up to, to get them at round voting time. Um, so, so where do they stand in this whole issue of of what do you think? Well, I, I think you're ignoring them, and I think you're ignoring a really valuable you, resource. You I think, I think this conference, okay. I think the majority of people here are ignoring them. It, partly, I mean, you can't deal with everything. This is a professional conference. These are, the people are talking about professional journalism and professional standards. But, but I think that it relates directly to what yeah, you're talking yeah, because, because they could be a source or a participant. You're talking about a daily. different mind state, and maybe. It, it's seeing the audience, this, this session, more than any other. So the point that, that made me put Yeah, my please hand do, first... and actually it would be nice for all of us, since we haven't talked about it, to know which are the strength of this community journalism and which are the weakness and how the, you could... The, weakness, the weaknesses, in my opinion, is that they receive no training. They, well, they, their training is often very very haphazard. In Australia, there's some fantastic training. A lot of mainstream Australian journalists began as community broadcasters. It's a recognised part of the training sector in, in Australia. Um, and they, some do a very fantastic job. But it's often dependent. This is the, to the point that made me raise my hand about uh, there are no gates. There are a lot of gates. There is still information rich. There's still information poor. There are, are people who are cut off from this wonderful world of networking because they are old, don't have the resources. If they've got a computer at their home, it's being used by the kids. I mean, my, my six-year-old son taught himself to Google when he was five. He's been using a, the computer since he was two and a half. Um, I, don't, I have no idea what his relationship is going to be yeah. like in the future. But I work with some really fantastic 50-year-olds, 
and they use computers if they have to, but it's not part of their lives and they don't have their own computer at home. Um, yeah, so, so I'm saying there is still an information rich and an information poor. And you, you're tapping into the same consumer model. The people with the money are the ones who, who get the attention. The people without the money, they don't get the attention. That's Thank it. you. Thank Sorry, you very much. Sorry, bit of a no. passionate rant, rave there. It's fine. You're part of our network here. Um, Lisa McMillan again from Australia. Uh, <laughs> actually, Victoria uh, touched on some of it. I'm just wondering, who's the audience? Um, and, and she did mention, you know, people with computers and things like my mum says to me, can you just show me what this internet thing is one day? And she still has no clue. Um, because there's a whole lot of people who...